Dear students, greetings for the day. Today we will discuss about introduction to weaving and methods. Combination of fibers and yarns in different ways produce a pliable and plain like structure known as a fabric. These fabrics are produced for different purposes such as apparel, home textiles and industrial purposes. Fabrics are made from solutions, directly from fibers, from yarns, and combining fabrics. Among these, fabrics made from yarns are more common. Weaving is more popular method of fabric construction as two-thirds of world production of fabrics is based on weaving. Weaving is the old art known to primitive man before spinning. He may have developed the art by observing the nests of birds, the interlacing of twigs and bushes. At the beginning it was a crude art but later it has taken a slow progress as spinning improved. The production increased after the introduction of loom, the basic tool for weaving. Weaving is a process of interlacing two sets of yarns, warp and weft. The yarns that run in the lengthwise direction of a fabric are called as warp yarns and also referred as ends. The yarns that run crosswise or right angle to warp are called weft yarns, also referred as filling, warp or picks. However the terms ends and picks are commonly used by the manufacturers. Interlacing is a point where the warp and weft cross over and change position from underside to surface or vice versa. A fabric will be serviceable when more number of ends and picks are present in a balanced manner. A woven fabric has a self-edge called selvedge or selvage which runs on either side along the length of the fabric. The present loom is not a single man's invention but it has been developed through ages. The early looms were very crude devices as the main weaving was done by hand. Later many developments have taken place and finally a simple loom was developed only in the 18th century. Materials with woven designs are produced by modifying the simple loom. Loom and its parts whether it is a new or old loom, there are some basic principles slash parts it should possess in common. The basic parts of the loom are, 1. Warp beam. 2. Cloth beam. 3. Harnesses. 4. Reed. 5. Shuttle. The warp beam is a huge cylinder on which the sized warp yarns are wound parallel to each other and is placed at the back of the loom. The warp yarns extend to another cylinder called as cloth beam on which the already woven cloth is wound round, while weaving it is present at the front of the loom. In between these two beams the warp yarns are present and they are at tension. Harness is a frame present near the warp beam which helps is separating the warp yarns while weaving. This frame holds number of needle like wires called headdles having an eye at the center. Warp yarns must pass through these headdles. Two harnesses are essential for simple basic weaving. The number may vary according to the intricacy of the design. In simple weaving alternate warp yarns are passed through each harness. Thus all odd numbered warp yarns are passed through the headdles of the first harness and even numbered warp yarns are passed through the headdles of the second harness. The operation of drawing of a warp yarn through each headdle is known as drawing in. Harnesses are raised and lowered as per the design during weaving.
The red which is present near the cloth beam is also a frame consisting of thin, vertical non-movable wires. It is a comb-like one and the openings between wires are called dents through which the warp yarn passes. Shuttle is an important part of the loom as it carries the weft or filling yarn. It is a boat-shaped one usually made up of wood having a slit at the center to insert the bobbin around which the filling yarn is wound. There is a small hole present at the front of the shuttle to pass the filling yarn. Shuttle glides from one end to another end of the loom releasing the filling yarn while the loom is in operation. Weaving is a continuous process, but there are four fundamental operations which are performed in sequence. Shedding, while the loom is in operation certain number of warp yarns are raised and others are lowered by means of harnesses, thus forming a shed to facilitate the insertion of weft yarn. Picking, the shuttle moves through the shed that is formed carrying the filling yarn. This operation is known as picking. The name is probably originated before the invention of the shuttle and harnesses, as each and every warp yarn had to be picked up for inserting the weft yarn. Battening, otherwise known as beating up. This is a process of packing the filling yarns uniformly throughout the weave construction. Reed which is a comb-like device does this operation by pushing each pick when it is inserted. Without this operation it would be impossible to produce close construction in fabrics. Taking up and letting off, this is the process of taking up of already woven cloth on cloth beam and releasing of warp yarns from warp beam. This is done in order to maintain the same distance from harness to cloth beam. These four operations are constantly repeated until the cloth of desired size is made. As already referred, all woven materials have two sets of yarns that run lengthwise and widthwise of the fabric. The yarns that run lengthwise are warp yarns and the yarns that run crosswise or right angles to the warp yarns are weft yarns. These yarns interlace with each other to produce the fabric. An interlacing is a point at which the warp and weft yarns cross by changing the positions from surface to underside and vice versa. If more interlacings are present, the material is stronger but the no of warp and weft yarns used is relatively low. If a yarn crosses another without interlacing, it is termed as a float. More number of yarns are packed in to get compact construction as the numbers of interlacings are few in constructions having floats. The warp and weft yarns differ in certain characteristics. Warp yarns are always stronger and are given more twist and made from good quality yarns as they have to withstand the tension of weaving. Weft yarns are less stronger, given less twist and usually contain a single yarn. Generally ply yarns are present in warp. To get fancy effects different types of novelty yarns are used only in weft.
It is difficult for a common man to differentiate the warp and weft yarns, but the following few tips definitely help to recognize the warp and weft. 1. The yarns that run along the cell wedge are warp yarns and those that run crosswise are weft yarns. 2. If a cell wedge is not present, ravel out one yarn and test for crimp. Warp yarn show less crimp than weft as they lie straight on the loom. 3. The fabric stretches more along weft than in warp. 4. Decorative yarns are usually found in weft. 5. The name of the fabric sometimes indicates the warp and weft directions. For X, a satin material has always warp floats and a poplin material has always a weft rib. When the fabric is made, it weaves a self edge along the sides as the weft yarn is not cut but turns back and taken again along the same path. The present shuttleless looms are equipped with machinery that cut the weft yarns at sides and thus the selvage appears in the form of a fringe that requires to be finished. There are different types of selvages. Plain selvages are narrow and are woven like the body of the fabric. These are seen mainly in all dress materials. Tape selvages are flat, broader and firmer than plain selvages. To get flatness they are woven in basket weave irrespective of the body weave. Examples are towels, sheets, curtains and other drapery materials. Split edges are made when the width of the fabric is less. To observe economy, the fabric is woven in full width and it is cut for desired width and then these cut edges are finished with a hem or a machine chain stitch. Fused cell edges are those that are seen in ribbons and other narrow width fabrics. As these materials are generally made of thermoplastic materials, the fabric is cut for the desired width and the edges are fused with heat. Grain is the indication of the position of warp and weft yarns in a fabric. It is an important factor since it is the main point while cutting fabrics for dresses. The grain positions are lengthwise grain, crosswise grain, bias and garment bias. The lengthwise grain is the position along the cell wedge or along any warp yarn. Crosswise grain is the position along any filling yarn or right angle to the cell wedge. True bias is the diagonal of a perfect square and garment bias which is the position between true bias and either lengthwise or crosswise green. The yarns present in fabrics are sometimes thick and thin. The yarns are closer in one fabric and they are far in another fabric. Usually warp yarns are more than filling yarns per inch as the stress in weaving and also in use is primarily on the warp yarns. A close constructed fabric is always advantageous as it keeps its shape better, shrinks less, slips less and wears longer than loosely constructed materials. The closeness or looseness of the material is measured by the count of the cloth. This count also known as the thread count or fabric count. It is the number of warp and weft yarns present in one square inch of grey materials. The yarns in fabrics come closer as the material shrinks during wet processing. It is always desirable to take the count in grey goods as the wet processing varies with the end use. This count is measured by using a pick glass which has a magnifying glass mounted on a small stand with a square opening in its space. The warp and weft yarns are magnified and the counting is made easy. This glass is available is one quarter, one half and one capacities. The count is multiplied by four and two when one quarter and one half glasses are used respectively. For counting, the fabric is placed flat over which the pick glass is placed after raveling yarns from an edge. The warp yarns are counted first and then the filling yarns. 
the count is not taken with the cell wedge or nearer to it as the count is high. If the count of the cloth is 100 warps and 100 filling per inch, the count is expressed as 100 by 100. If the count is 80 warps and 60 wefts, it is expressed as 80 by 60. The warp is always written first and then the filling. The consumer should always see for high count materials. Low count materials are not durable and sometimes woven to produce lightweight material that is more porous or to cheapen it. The proportion of warp yarns to filling yarns is called the as balance of the cloth. A fabric is said to have good balance when the number of warp and weft yarns in an inch of fabric are nearly the same. However, a difference of 10 can exist between warp and weft yarns. Thus, a fabric with 60 by 60 or 65 by 60 is said to have good balance. But a fabric having a count of 60 by 40 is said to have poor balance as there are too many warps and too few wefts. Good balance is important in fabrics that stand for hardware. The fabrics with poor balance will slip at seams thus giving a shredded effect. It is not true that a fabric with good balance is always durable. Instead a fabric with a count of 80 by 60 is desirable than a fabric with a low count of 30 by 30, even though the former one is unbalanced and later is balanced. So it is always important to consider both count of cloth and balance of cloth to determine the durability of the materials. Fabrics of different widths are available in the market. The width of the loom determines the width of the fabrics. Cotton dressing materials are usually 90 cms or 36 wide. Hand loom materials are wider than mill made materials. Silk and wool materials are always made more than 40 wide. Sheeting materials are available with 50, 54 and 62 width. Toweling materials and materials for such other end uses are woven with narrow widths. The yarns intended for weaving are made in the required size and twisted as per the end use. The warp yarns are processed further to prepare them for weaving. The weft yarns are of desired size are taken and wound on small bobbins as per the size of the shuttle used. The warp yarns are passed through operations such as spooling, creeling, warping and slashing before they are placed on the loom. Spooling refers to winding of the yarn on larger spools or cones. The cones are placed on a rack called a creel and the operation is termed as creeling. Warping refers to drawing of yarns from each spool and winding around the warp beam. An uninterrupted length of hundreds of yarn based on the warp count are placed on the warp beam. The yarn from the warp beam is passed through a padding mangle that contains a stiffening material such as starch and made to pass over a heated drum to facilitate drying. This operation is done to make the warp yarn to withstand the stress during weaving and is termed as slashing. However, it should be noted that these operations do not improve the quality of the fabric. In handloom industry, the above operations are performed manually without the use any machinery and it is time consuming. Therefore, in many handloom pockets, semi-automatic warping and slashing machines are introduced to help the weavers to augment the production.